Uh-oh, hurricane alert! Everyone's hiding! The speed of the wind outside is more than 75 miles per hour. Seems like a lot. But this storm is moving at 400 miles per hour. Wait, do such speeds exist? Yep, but to see a storm that fast, you'll have to travel to Jupiter. So let the journey begin. The planet is huge. Almost 1,300 Earths could fit into this gas giant. It's also incredibly hot, with the temperatures reaching about 43,000 degrees Fahrenheit at the planet's core. Unfortunately, you can't land on Jupiter's surface because, well, being a gas giant, it doesn't have any solid surface. But you can go deeper into Jupiter's atmosphere. Look at these thick brown, yellow, red, and white clouds passing by. They're what make the planet look colorful and kind of striped. If you continue descending toward the center of the planet, you'll see its atmosphere, mostly made up of hydrogen and helium gas, becoming liquid. It happens because of immense atmospheric pressure. The planet's core itself is a mysterious object. Scientists still haven't figured out whether it's a molten ball of thick liquid or a solid rock 14 to 18 times the mass of Earth. Anyway, exploring Jupiter isn't the main goal of your trip. No, you've arrived here to see the Great Red Spot. It's an enormous storm raging in the southern hemisphere of the gas giant. Its top parts are towering more than 5 miles above the tops of the surrounding clouds. The storm is 1.3 times wider than our planet. In 2017, NASA's Juno space probe managed to collect lots of data about the red spot. And it turned out that this monster of a storm goes more than 200 miles down into the planet's atmosphere. That's 30 to 100 times deeper than any ocean on Earth. But these measurements are most likely imprecise, and the storm's true roots can be reaching even deeper. The Great Red Spot is colder than the rest of the atmosphere. And keep in mind that Jupiter's temperatures are minus 234 degrees Fahrenheit in the upper cloud layers. On the other hand, the closer to the core, the hotter it gets. Mysteriously, the highest temperatures ever recorded on the gas giant occurred in the atmosphere right above the Great Red Spot. There, the heat reached 2,400 degrees. This temperature is higher than that of lava on our planet. Astronomers believe that the turbulence caused by the storm might produce gravitational and sound waves that can be responsible for the superheating. But the storm itself is warmer at the bottom than at the top. People have been watching the moving vortex on Jupiter for more than 150 years. Some time ago, astronomers predicted that it would gradually slow down and become smaller or disappear entirely. But that turned out not to be the case. After having analyzed all the data received with the help of the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers were baffled to discover that the winds at the outer boundaries of the storm had actually picked up speed. The change in the wind speed is no more than 1.5 miles per hour during one Earth year. It's a tiny change. But however small the difference is, it still means a lot. The wind speed at the edges of the storm can reach a mind-boggling 400 miles per hour. That's faster than Earth's tornadoes. At the same time, if you found yourself at the center of the Great Red Spot, you wouldn't be too impressed. The winds there move way more slowly. Scientists faced lots of challenges when they were trying to understand the mystery that was the Great Red Spot. It's unclear what fuels the storm. Can it be the nature of the storm's home planet? Since it's a gas giant, Jupiter doesn't have any solid ground, so there's no friction, which might be the only thing that could make the storm weaken. The hot gases in the planet's atmosphere are always moving, rising, falling, swirling, just like on our home planet, where cooler and warmer air mix and merge into one another, forming giant circling storms. Astronomers think that once, several enormous storms could have come together and created the Great Red Spot. And now, it keeps going by constantly drawing cool gases from below and hot gases from above. Plus, the storm might be absorbing other smaller vortices. This makes the Great Red Spot even more powerful. Unfortunately, thick clouds on Jupiter don't allow astronomers to see what's going on in the planet's lower atmosphere. Scientists have been speculating on what may hide beneath the Great Red Spot for decades. Is it a massive volcano? Eh, unlikely. Jupiter is mostly made up of gases, and it doesn't have a crust that could crack, letting lava escape from the planet's interior. 
There were also a few theories explaining why the storm has its trademark color. It varies from whitish and pale salmon to bright orange and brick red. Some scientists believe the answer lies deep below the Great Red Spot, closer to the planet's surface. A colorless layer of gas might be reacting to the UV radiation coming from the sun. This is probably what gives the storm its red color. But so far, it's just a theory. Hey, your guess is as good as mine, huh? Jupiter isn't the only planet that can boast having a giant storm. Another one, as wide as our home planet, rages on Saturn. It's called the Great White Spot. How clever! The storm has a tail of white clouds encircling the entire planet. It occurs every 30 years or so. The storm indeed starts as a spot, but then it starts stretching and stretching. Astronomers have figured out that the Great White Spot is actually a huge system of thunderstorms. At the top of the storm, lightning can flash more than 10 times per second. But the main mystery about the Great White Spot is where it gets its energy from. Some scientists think it may be powered by the sun. Others argue that the storm's cloud pattern only makes sense if there's an internal source of heat that can power the winds. Anyway, severe storms on different planets of the solar system aren't the only space mystery that makes astronomers scratch their heads. Let's move to Pluto, the largest known dwarf planet in the solar system, and explore its atmosphere. It rises really high above the surface of the planet and has more than 20 layers, all of them freezing cold and extremely condensed. By the way, our moon also has some sort of an atmosphere. Called an exosphere, it consists of helium, neon, and argon. It's 10 trillion times less dense than Earth's atmosphere. While traveling through space, watch out for black holes! Woo! A black hole is a place where gravity is so strong that even light can't get out. But black holes can sometimes behave like a massive galactic volcano. From time to time, they flare up. Sounds like me. But instead of spewing lava, they produce enormous amounts of energy. And this phenomenon leaves gaping holes in the surrounding material and gas. A short while ago, scientists discovered one of the largest craters in the universe. Radio and X-ray telescopes detected a supermassive black hole that threw a temper tantrum many, many years ago. It happened in a galaxy cluster about 390 million light-years away from Earth. The crater this event left behind could fit 15 Milky Way galaxies. Yeah, I can't get my head around that either. During your space voyage, think twice before landing on unknown planets. Otherwise, you may end up in a place like K2-141b. That's a planet outside of our solar system. At first glance, it's not that different from Earth. It has liquid oceans that evaporate, form clouds, condense, and get back to the surface as rain. But instead of water, it rains rocks. The surface of this exoplanet is covered with lava seas dozens of miles deep. The temperatures on the K2-141b reach 5,000 degrees during the day. That's toasty enough for the magma in the oceans to vaporize into the atmosphere. Then, supersonic winds, which can move at the speed of 1 mile per second, carry this rock vapor into the planet's night side. The vaporized magma cools down, becomes liquid again, and falls as a rocky rain. Uh Uh-uh, not a vacation spot. Too hot. I'll pass. There are almost no similarities between Earth and Jupiter. Ours is a sweet, small planet with plants and cute pandas. Jupiter is a giant gas horror with furious hurricanes which never subside. And if you fall into this planet, you might literally fly through it. But what would happen if our Earth was the size of the father of the solar system? Oh, this is going to be fun. Jupiter is a planet so big that I bet you can't even imagine its scale. Its radius is about 11 times the radius of Earth, and it's about 316 times more massive. So, to turn Earth into another Jupiter, we'd need to increase its radius by 11 times. If the planet's density remained the same, then the mass of our new Earth would increase greatly. Actually, it'd be as much as four times larger than Jupiter's. Of course, these changes wouldn't go smoothly. The very first thing that we would immediately notice, nope, not the size, gravity. It would increase by about 11 times compared to old Earth's. 
Scientists say we can actually survive on a planet with greater gravity, but only if it's less than five times stronger than what we have now. Well, let's assume that we're daredevils, always ready to challenge nature. What would our life be like? Well, not very pleasant. After each step, you'd have to sit down on a bench and take a break, as if you've just run a marathon. Yes, it would be that hard to walk. Oh, and good luck with getting up later. In order to somehow move around this planet, we'd have to pump up very strong muscles. No more problems with junk food, cause you'd have to become a heavy lifter just to get to the refrigerator. The force of gravity affects not only movement, but also the size of everything. Do you know that many astronauts gain some height due to weightlessness in space? So if you're worried about being short, here's a solution for you. On the other hand, strong gravity would make us all shorter. This would go not only for humans, but for everything on our planet. Trees would become very small. To grow upward, they would have to move water from their roots to branches, which would be unrealistic with such gravity. So they'd all turn into little bushes. Also, no more mountains. Even the largest ones would become very small. But at least now, everyone would be able to conquer Everest. This would also apply to animals. Our pets would have to quickly evolve into pumped up corgis just to be able to walk somehow. Oh, and say goodbye to birds, of course. If you think that's not enough suffering, let's add another thing. It would be very difficult for us to breathe. Atmospheric pressure would increase dramatically. That's because Earth would start to pull air toward itself with great force. You'd literally feel the weight of it on your shoulders. Remember what I said about taking a break after each step? Now, imagine that you'd also have to breathe through a pillow. Yeah. And that's not all. Atmospheric pressure plays an important role in the behavior of water molecules. It would be much more difficult for water to boil or turn into ice. Most icebergs would melt, and it's possible that we'd have no more clouds, too. All water vapor would come crashing down on us in giant torrents of rain. We'd be lucky if we didn't get flooded instantly. But, oddly enough, there would also be some advantages. For example, everything around us would become much more spacious. Assuming we didn't get flooded, there would even be a bunch of deserted areas on the planet. Maybe land prices would finally fall. But these unexplored areas would most likely remain unexplored, since we'd hardly be able to travel across seas and oceans. Not only because moving across the water would be incredibly difficult, but also because all water bodies on the planet would become 10 times larger. The very thought of getting lost in the ocean is frightening, but imagine if it was 10 times deeper and bigger? Uh-oh. So, no more sailing. And forget about flying by plane. Or visiting space ever again. But it seems like it's still not all. If Earth was the size of Jupiter, we'd also have volcanoes raging everywhere. Due to the increase in its mass, Earth would become terribly unstable. All extinct volcanoes would become active again and there would be lava and poisonous gases everywhere. In 1883, there was the most destructive eruption in the history of humankind, the eruption of the Krakatoa volcano. It occurred on one small island, but people all over the planet could feel the consequences. The eruption destroyed the island, triggered many tsunamis, and clouds of poisonous gases spread for miles. Now imagine this, but 10 times worse. That's what would happen on our Jupiter-sized Earth. It would probably be similar to the fall of the Chicxulub meteorite, the one that wiped dinosaurs off the face of the Earth. Then, poisonous gases spread all over the planet, causing one of the greatest massive extinctions in the history of Earth. Oh, and we would also lose the magnetic field, like the cherry on top of the cake. The magnetic field is very important for life on Earth. According to Rory Barnes from the University of Washington, it shields life on the planet from the nastiness of space, which means all sorts of radiation and solar winds. 
There's a molten iron core inside our planet that is responsible for producing the magnetic field. If the amount of pressure on this core increased due to gravity, it could solidify. And because of this, Earth's magnetic field would disappear. We would be exposed to the effects of cosmic radiation. Too scary to even imagine. All right, so now we know that living on this new Earth would be a real nightmare. But what about outer space? You've probably heard that Jupiter, thanks to its strong gravity, protects us from asteroids. Well, this would become our job. Jupiter experiences about 24,000 collisions a year. And now, it'd be our destiny. Do you remember me mentioning the Chicxulub meteorite? Similar tragedies happen to our planet once every 100 million years or so. But if it became the size of Jupiter, these guys would visit us every Friday. Also, we'd have to say bye-bye to the moon. Our natural satellite is too close to us. So if Earth grew in size, it would be a real catastrophe. We would literally watch the moon being torn apart in the sky. Of course, after that, all these fragments would crash into us. One of the theories claims that billions of years ago, the moon somehow separated from Earth and its pieces gathered into a ball. Now, it would be like watching its creation rewind. And even if the moon survived, somehow remaining in Earth's orbit, the changes in the tides would still be dramatic. The consequences of these changes would be very unpredictable, but probably a bunch of tsunamis would be some of them. On the other hand, we'd probably gain a couple of new moons. Jupiter has as many as 79 of them. It would probably be a spectacular view if only gas clouds from all those volcanic eruptions didn't block it. Also, the appearance of a second giant planet would have significant consequences for the whole solar system. Don't worry, other planets wouldn't crash into us. Many people underestimate just how far the planets are from one another. But still, the new Earth would shift the orbits of other planets a little and affect the rotation speed and Earth itself would rotate around the Sun much more slowly because of its huge mass. For example, one year equals 12 Earth years on Jupiter. All this, of course, would greatly affect seasons and the climate in general. So, would there be life on Earth? Bold of you to even ask this question. But if one day we do manage to find a habitable super-Earth close to Jupiter in size, it would be very interesting to take a look at it. Scientists keep finding new planets they call super-Earths. It's a class of more massive planets than Earth, but way lighter than ice giants such as Uranus and Neptune. Super-Earths can be made of rock, gas, or a combination of these two. They are often twice or even up to 10 times bigger than the Earth. They're interesting to study, but kind of too far away from us. They're pretty common outside of our solar system, together with other interesting planets like mini Neptunes. Those can also be gas dwarfs, ice giants, or huge rocky bodies. But again, we don't have anything like that. But something we do have that those other solar systems don't? Jupiter. It's the biggest and heaviest object that orbits our sun. This king of planets possesses a powerful force to dominate our solar system. Jupiter is notorious for eating planets. A protoplanet slammed into it about 4.5 billion years ago when Jupiter was still a young planet in its early stages. This protoplanet was 10 times heavier than Earth and was made of ice and rock. The collision was huge, Jupiter's core broke apart, and helium and hydrogen mixed with denser materials. Through time, the heavy material settled back into the dense core, which is what we see today. And if it swallowed a planet before, it might keep doing it as well. We suspect our solar system used to have many more large planets than it has now. For example, it's kind of empty around Mercury today. Similar areas around many other central stars are definitely more packed with intermediate mass planets with the size between Earth and Neptune. Our solar system was a chaotic place at its beginnings. Young stars were surrounded by swirling disks of dust and gas and planets would form out of that debris, something like trees when they're springing up from the ground. 
small rocky planets would form in the strong heat and light close to stars, while gas giants would form farther out, where temperatures were lower, which means they could preserve more gassy materials. And even though planets in our solar system seem pretty stable and peaceful today, following their orbit, they weren't that calm before. Some planets didn't have a circular orbit. They had oblong, more eccentric paths. It took them swinging first toward their stars and then farther away. It was like they had been thrown off kilter by the gravity of other planets on their way. There's something called the Grand Tack Theory. It explains things happening in the first few million years when our solar system was forming. At some point, Jupiter, one of the key players here, may have been pulled in closer by our central star. After that, it went back and took a huge cloud of debris. It was like a sailboat when it tacks around a buoy. This kind of messed with planets that were in the process of formation. After Saturn was fully formed, our close neighbors in the solar system cleared out a little. But if the idea about Grand Tack is correct, Jupiter had grabbed everything in its way, and its migrations had caused more collisions in this area. Jupiter might have delivered some of the water that now fills the oceans we have on our planet. It shepherds plenty of asteroids. From time to time, it sends some whizzing into interstellar space or amongst the planets in our solar system. It may have even taken part in the dinosaur extinction 66 million years ago. When the huge space rock hit the Earth, it left a crater off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It all caused earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis that made a huge impact on all animal and plant life on Earth. No one knows where it came from. We're not even sure if it was an asteroid or a comet. One theory says it may have been a comet that came from the Oort cloud, which is made of icy debris and is located somewhere at the edge of our solar system. It could have been bumped off course by Jupiter and its powerful gravitational force. This way, our solar system was like a pinball machine, where Jupiter, the biggest planet, kicks incoming comets into orbits that send them closer to the Sun. When these comets are near the Sun, they can go through strong tidal forces that break them apart and eventually create shrapnel-like pieces of a comet. That event was a point when our mammalian ancestors started to rule. That means without Jupiter, there might not be us either, nor the Earth. It seemed like our biggest planet came swinging in, destroyed older planets, and cleared the way for smaller worlds like ours. Jupiter may have been the reason why we can't find Planet 9 right now. Scientists believe it exists, and they think it could be hiding somewhere beyond Neptune, but not Pluto. There are three zones in our solar system, the inner planets, outer planets, and whatever there is beyond. The mysterious planet could be the size of the Earth or Mars. It swirled among the gas giants before they eventually swept it toward the outer parts of our solar system, or even somewhere into deep space. Jupiter has stripes because of differences in temperature, atmospheric gas, and chemical composition. Scientists used to think the only reason for these different colors was the mighty atmospheric wind and material circulating between layers of the atmosphere. Now we know the light-colored stripes, or so-called zones, show us where the gas rises. When the stripes are dark-colored, they're called belts and can tell us where gas is sinking. Jupiter's moons could also be why the planet is stripy, because they're tugging on its atmospheric convection cells. At the center of Jupiter, there's a dense liquid core made of helium and metallic hydrogen, together with dissolved heavier elements. As we go further from its center, the temperature and pressure inside the planet drop off. That way, the liquid interior gives way to gases from the atmosphere. Again, mostly helium and hydrogen. No one knows how deep this liquid gas boundary lies, but the planet is probably fully liquid a couple of thousand miles under its cloud tops. Jupiter would still be bigger than some other giants, like Saturn, if we could strip its gases. Jupiter is sometimes even called a failed star, although that's not quite correct. It's mostly made of hydrogen, like regular stars, but it's still not massive enough to start thermonuclear reactions in its core, which would eventually turn it into a real star. In theory, every object could be turned into a star if you only add enough matter to it. If there's enough mass, the temperature and internal pressure will increase and start thermonuclear reactions. So, to turn Jupiter into a star, such as the Sun, you'd have to make it 1,000 times more massive. 
But to form a cooler red dwarf, you'd only need 80 Jupiter masses more. That way, Jupiter won't spontaneously become a new star of our solar system. But if many space objects with similar mass collide with it, or in other words, if Jupiter eats them, then maybe. <laughs> you never know. But in theory, if it could become a massive star, it would have stopped other planets from forming in stable orbits. It would have also increased the radiation that the surface of those planets get, which is why it would be really hard for life to develop in our solar system. Jupiter is the planet that spins the fastest in our solar system. It only needs 10 hours to make a full rotation on its axis, even though it's huge, more than 300 times bigger than the Earth and 2.5 times more massive than the rest of the planets in our entire solar system together. But if it got more massive, it would shrink. More mass would make Jupiter denser, which means it would begin pulling in on itself. So it could get four times its mass and would still be the same size.